The Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator Cash, which is also shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Thank you, Senators. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly, and I call Senator Cash. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. And as we all know, life is full of great ironies, and I have to say, one of the ironies that will soon become apparent later today is in the same week that the Australian Parliament is setting up a national anti-corruption commission, the Albanese government will formally hand over to the most militant union in Australia the construction industry with the formal abolition of the ABCC. That is right. Shame. One of life's great ironies. Over this hand, stand up today. There will be a press conference tonight. Mr Albanese will say, my government has put in place a national anti-corruption commission, but at the same time what he'll conveniently forget to tell Australians is, within about 48 hours, his government will also abolish the building industry watchdog and again officially hand the building sector in Australia over to John Setka. He's rubbing his hands. Got a bit to say about him shortly the most militant union in Australia. But it's not really ironic. I say that tongue-in-cheek. And why is it not ironic? Because one only has to look at the amount of money that the Australian Labor Party has received from the most militant union in Australia and the MUA over the past 20 years. Now, one might ask, well, how much money is that? Well, let's have a look. $16.3 million no has gone directly from the most militant Silence. union in Australia and the MUA into the Australian Labor Party's coffers. So it should not come as a, as a surprise, colleagues, when I say that the CFMMEU was one of Labor's biggest financial donors in 2020-2021, providing them with almost $1 million in payments. So total union funds to the Australian Labor Party, headed up at this point in time by Prime Minister Albanese, financial year 18 through to 20, 19 million three hundred and five thousand eight hundred and six dollars. So again, it is a little ironic that with a vote this afternoon, the Labor Party establishes a National Anti-Corruption Commission. We won't talk about the fact that officials from registered organisations are exempt from certain parts, because that would be union officials. But at the same time, the irony is they will shortly abolish the Australian Building and Construction Commission and hand the building and construction industry over to the most militant union in Australia. Now, why is this actually an issue? Well, let's have a look at what CFMMEU Victorian Secretary John Setka said recently, as reported. He said he was actually, colleagues, you'll be unsurprised, mm. impressed by Tony Burke's move oh. to scrap the ABCC and the Building Code. And I quote, in a letter to members as reported on the 28th of October 2022, he said this, without going the early crow, I'm hoping that this government is going to be different from the Rudd-Gillard governments. And from what I've seen so far, I'm quietly confident. Our next EBA negotiations are now not going to be restricted to ship clauses and we'll have the power to go after non-union sites. And I give credit to Mr Skecker and it's not often I do, because at least Mr Setka has called out the blindingly obvious thank you very much from John Setka of the CFMMEU to Mr Albanese, Mr Burke and those that give money directly into the Labor Party's coffers. But what's of more concern is this. When it comes to handing the building industry over to the most militant union in Australia, let's just remind ourselves of why it is so dangerous for women. Because those on the other side will stand up and say they have the best interests of women in Australia at heart with all of their policies. Well, I have to say, again, one of life's ironies, given the following. The lawless activities of John Secker's CFMMEU include alleged threats to kill, rape and sexually assault women, 
CFMEU official jailed for assault once told a female inspector she was an effing SLUT, asking her if she had brought knee pads as, and I quote, you are going to be sucking on these effing dogs all day. A second CFMEU official made three phone calls late night to a female inspector's mobile phone. The last call logged at 11.23pm. One caller said, you are an effing rat. Another caller said, me and my seven mates are going to come and eff you. But guess what? None of that actually matters, because the money has flowed from the most militant union into the ALP's coffers, tune of millions and millions of dollars. It's time now to pay the paymaster, and that is exactly what Mr Albanese is doing. Shame. Senator Sheldon. Well, isn't it interesting? You know, here we have Liberal Party, Liberal MP, talk about Liberal, talk about donations. Of course, what they don't talk about is Jerry Hansen, who has given at least $175,000 to the Liberal Party in donations since 2014. And this is a great person who's standing by women's rights, because Marinika Human, a 27-year-old German backpacker, fell to her death on a Hansen worksite in October 2016. Hansen was fined $60,000 for health and safety violations. There has been multiple media reports about allegations of Hanson Proprietary Limited being involved in sham contracting and underpayments to workers. But where was the ABCC? Nowhere to be found, because that would have meant that you had to go after one of the Liberal Party donors. Heaven forbid if that had happened. Now let's actually look at what's been happening with regards to the ABCC. And don't worry about what I've got to say. Let's start, talk about, let's start talking about what a number of judges have to say, because it's very enlightening. Because they've said, they've said the ABCC and Justice North in 2017-18 blasted the ABCC for prosecuting two CFM MEU officials for having a cup of tea with a mate. Get that? Teagate. They just start spending tens upon tens upon tens of thousands of dollars on someone having a cup, of, a cup of tea. And the judge went on to say this is a minuscule, insignificant affair. Went on to say this is all external forces that are beating up what's just really an ordinary situation that amounts to virtually nothing. And went on to say further, for goodness sake, I don't know what the ins inspectorate is doing. When the ABCC used public resources, it went on to say, to bring the bar down to this level, it really calls into question the exercise of discretion to proceed. The fact is there are organisations, and they say there should be organisations, to hold employers to account and everybody else to account on what happens on building sites, workplaces, companies, corporations and this parliament. Because that's one of the things that's really important. Because what we didn't see is a positive duty of care support to prevent sexual harassment for respect at work from the opposition. Of course, they didn't want to, the coalition didn't want to support that. They didn't want to support that, of course, they didn't want to support it. Because it's not about supporting people, it's about supporting people like Jerry Hansen. They didn't want to support industrial manslaughter laws, where 154 construction workers died between 2016 and 2020. Because that would be holding people like Jerry Hansen, those sorts of people, to account. They don't want to do that. That's just too difficult. Because what they want to do, as Justice Kerr said, slamming the ABCC in 2021, described a case for the ABCC over egging, its case and being a battleship in full steam, which is difficult in turning, conducting proceedings as a, as a blood sport. That's what they described, a judge described in 2021, Justice Kerr, of the ABCC's approach. But don't worry, it's some even more recent cases. In 2022, Justice Katzman discussed to criticise the ABCC for misrepresentation of evidence and filing court proceedings that were unnecessarily inflammatory. And of course, then you go to the ABCC, $488,000 pursuing Lend-Lease over Eureka Flags. Then you go to $495,000 unsuccessfully pursuing a union because they demanded a woman's toilet on the work site. So you've got the cup of tea, you've got the toilet gate, you've got tea gate, and you've got flag gate. And they're spending a pile of money which judge after judge has said is inappropriate and immaterial. This does not actually turn around. But don't worry, 
They want to tell us that this is all about productivity. The opposition tells us this is about productivity. Well, let's look at what the productivity has actually been in the construction industry. And you won't be surprised that the productivity during the period the ABC has been in existence is labour productivity down 2.4 per cent in 2017-18. Well, maybe they might get their act together and it'll improve. Labour productivity down 2.6 per cent in 2018-19. Maybe you think the productivity might even you know, they might have got a crescendo of good productivity, because for 2019-20 it went down another 2.6 per cent. Of course, outside the time when the ABCC has been there, productivity has been improving, because companies are about improving their arrangements, improving their skills, improving their performance, rather than just turning around and beating the, beating the drum on behalf of the government. Thank you, Senator Sheldon. Senator Henderson. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Acting Deputy President. Well, there are giants in politics, and one of those giants was former Labor Prime Minister Bob Hawke. If he was alive today, he would be disgusted. Disgust, disgusted that this Labor government, led by the most extreme left-wing Prime Minister in living memory, is pushing through some of the most extreme IR laws, which will set our country backwards, cost thousands of jobs and put our small and medium-sized businesses at the mercy of unscrupulous unions. He would be disgusted that this nation is now run by the unions, because that is exactly what is happening here. He would be disgusted that this Labor government was not putting the interests of Australians first. In 1983, he forged the historic accord between Labor and the ACTU in collaboration with business. He kept the unions at bay, in stark contrast to this Labor government, which, despite the gravest of concerns being raised by every employer group in the country, is determined to serve their paymasters at any cost. If Labor's extreme changes would force pa pattern bargaining onto a large part of the economy, where in the best interests of Australia, Anthony Senator Albanese Henderson. would not have Senator kept Henderson. his dirty, rotten Senator plan. Senator Henderson, would you mind taking your seat for a moment? I would just like to remind senators that uh, senators should be heard in silence, and it is disorderly to keep interjecting. Senator Henderson, you have the call. If Labor's extreme changes, which force pattern bargaining onto a large part of the economy, were in the best interests of Australia, Mr Albanese would not have kept this dirty, rotten plan a secret before the election. The abolition of the ABCC is another step into the dark ages, demonstrating that the unions are running the show. And, and in the case of the abolition of the ABCC, it's all about propping up the CFMMEU. Bob Hawke had the guts to deregister the rogue BLF, and in 2016 he said the unions need to clean up their act and get their house in order. It is just appalling. He said, I would not tolerate it. You know what I did with the BLF? I would throw out the CFMEU. And as we've heard from Senator Cash, things have just got worse. The ALP is receiving on average nearly a million dollars a year of donations from the CFMEU and the MUA, and that's been the case over the past two decades. The abolition of the ABCC is nothing more than payback. Total union funds to the ALP since 18 to 20, financial year 18 to 20, are almost 20 million dollars. The fact of the matter is that Mr Albanese is too weak to stand up to John Setka and the CFMMEU, and he's already given in to this demand. What else is next? Labor is turning a blind eye to the findings from royal commissions and countless rulings from the courts, which have highlighted the lawlessness and intimidation of the union and the need for strong workplace regulations. Labor is happy to hand the keys to the front gate and lunchrooms at building sites back to the CFMU. It is an absolute disgrace. It is a scandal. It is a scandal that officials from registered organisations, of course, including union officials, are exempt from the National Anti-Corruption Commission. It is a scandal that, despite the appalling treatment of women on building sites, that the, uh, that the uh, Labor government 
is working hand in glove with this union. And let me remind all senators here today that the High Court has found that the CFMEU was a serial offender which engages in whatever action and makes whatever threats it wishes without regard, regard to the law. It has contravened the laws on approximately 150 occasions. It was well resourced, and these fines are just the cost of doing business. The lawlessness on building sites when the CFMEU was in charge are frightening. The ABCC did so much important work to make sure that the interests of all Australians came first. It is an absolute disgrace that this Labor government hasn't got the guts to stand up to the lawlessness of the likes of the CFMEU, unlike the, one of the giants of the Labor Party, Bob Hawke. And as I say, he would be rolling in his grave if he could see how this Labor government has diminished the best interests of all Australians. Thank you, Senator Henderson. Senator Grogan. Well, I stand here proudly to reaffirm our intention to abolish the ineffective and the highly politicised ABCC. It has promoted the coalition's objective of maintaining an adversarial industrial relations system with low wage rises as a deliberate design feature. The Labor government believes agreements can be reached on work sites and that we can obtain a balance. We know that there are employers out there who are raring to take advantage of Labor's industrial relations policies. They don't want this ideological mud wrestling that we've got going on here, all of this yelling and shouting and carrying on and highlighting small parts of particular areas rather than looking overall at what these changes will do. They don't have any respect for workers, but not all employers want to crush workers. That is just not true, but it is what those opposite would have us believe. The ABCC is intentionally adversarial, with no real traction or outcomes to speak of. Only a handful of the current Australian Building and Construction Commission legal cases actually involve some of the core things they were set up for. They don't involve underpayment to a worker. They don't involve delayed payments to a subcontractor. What they involve, in the main, is the prosecution of union officials and delegates. Or should I say the persecution? Because the ideological manner in which they roll is unforgivable. Did the ABCC recover wages for workers? No. Totaled 5.9 million in seven years. We compare this 5.9. Let's just compare this 5.9 million in seven years to the 530 million that the Fair Work Ombudsman recovered in one year alone, or even the 17 million that the CFMMEU recovered in just six months. I think we can see quite clearly where their priorities are. The ABCC is an ineffective and a waste of taxpayer money. It's been a disaster for productivity in the sector, and it's done little to, to, to deal with any of the exploitation of workers that we have seen. The productivity data, which uh, Senator Sheldon went through before, let's just have a little revisit there, shall we? Declined every single year while the ABCC was the regulator pre-pandemic. Every year, a decline. Every year, a decline of over 2 per cent. 2.4 in 2017-18, 2.6 in 2018-19, and 2.6 again in 2019-20. So we have productivity fail. We have wage theft recovery fail. So how did they go on the prosecution? Now, my colleague went through some of those cases. Let me just tell you how much those cases that Senator Sheldon referred to cost. The Eureka flags. So basically, having a flag or a few stickers on a work site is such a major drama for the ABCC that they, that they spent over 488,000 pursuing lend lease over it. 
And then we had the issue of the women's toilet on a work site, which was pursued at a total cost of $495,000. And as for the tea cup of tea, well, that's, that's just ridiculous. And I will just point to the, uh, the judge said, I hold the clear view that this case where the ABC should publicly be publicly exposed as having wasted public money without any proper basis for doing so. So the ABC see, is a waste of time and a waste of money. And the hostility against the rank and file workers in the CFMMEU is deplorable. The CFMMEU is an amalgamation of a great many unions, many with their own very proud histories. And I do not stand here for one moment and defend any illegal activities, but I will tell you that those workers, those union members, are out there. They represent the solidarity of thousands of hardworking Australians across a vast range of industries that Australians order, rely on. Order, senators. And those opposite undermine the thousands of hardworking unionists, hardworking people in Australia working in industries that our country thank relies you, on. Thank you, Senator Grogan. Senator Scar. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I've got no issue with unions. My father was a member of a union, a proud member of a union. My mother was. My sister is. I've got no issue with unions whatsoever. But this, pro this country has a problem with the construction division, the construction division of the CFMEU, the construction division. So there's been a lot of talk about judges, etc. I just want the people listening to this debate to listen what our highest court said. So the highest court in the land is the High Court of Australia, our seven most preeminent judges. This is what they said about the construction division of the CFMEU. These aren't the words of a politician from either government or opposition. This is our highest court in the land about the construction division of the CFMEU, and it tells you everything you need to know about why we need the Australian Building and Construction Commission as the cop on the beat in terms of construction sites in this country. And this is what the High Court said, and I quote from paragraph 43 of their judgment in the Patterson case. The CFMEU's continuing defiance of the law indicates that it regards the penalties previously imposed as an acceptable cost of doing business. End quote. Those aren't my words. They aren't the member, words of a member of the Senate government benches in the Senate. They're the words of our highest court in the land. And in those circumstances, in those circumstances, why would you possibly think it's a good idea to abolish the Australian Building and Construction Commission? There was talk about the success rate of the Australian Building and Construction Commission. Everyone listening to this debate, you can look up their latest annual report and it provides all the details you need to see. In terms of the court proceedings they initiated during the 12 months ending 30 June 2022, they had a 100 per cent success rate. 100 per cent. They won every single case. So in every single case where they brought proceedings, the independent court found that in particular the CFMEU construction division had broken the law. Had broken the law. So in those circumstances, why would you possibly think it would be a good idea to abolish the Australian Building and Construction Commission? Well, I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Because if you go to page 44 of the annual report of the Australian Building and Construction Commission, you'll see a reference there to a Mr. Michael Rabbar. Mr Michael Rapper. He's a he was a senior official of the CFMEU construction division and he sat, I'm not sure if he still does, but he, he certainly did sit on the national executive of the Australian Labor Party. Exactly. Yes, he was sitting on their national executive, Mr Michael Rapper. What did he do? And let's let's read about Mr Michael Rapper. And I'll go to the footnote, but senators in this place know I like to go to the footnotes. In September 2021, Mr Rabbar abandoned his application with the Fair Work Commission to renew his federal right of entry permit, which gives him the right to go into construction sites, and he's no longer authorised to exercise any such entry rights. In accordance with the Fair Work Act, 
the Australian Building and Construction Commissioner intervened in the proceeding, arguing Mr Rabbar was not a fit and proper person to hold such a permit. Not a fit and proper person to hold a right of entry permit to go on the construction sites. Why? Because, and again I quote, in opposing the application for the permit, the Commissioner submitted that under Mr Rabbar's watch, so this is a, a senior official of the CFMEU and also either the previous or current member of the ALP National Executive, under Mr Rabbar's watch, the Queensland Division and its officials had contravened industrial law on 175 occasions. 175 occasions! And this fellow was sitting on the national executive of the Australian Labor Party. It's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. Do you know the situation got so bad in Queensland that workplace health and safety inspectors, who had the statutory obligation to go on the construction sites and make sure those construction sites were adhering to workplace health and safety laws. It got so bad in Queensland, the workplace health and safety inspectors went on strike yep, because, because they were concerned about their own personal safety from the CFMEU. That's how bad it is. That is how bad it is. And yet, in the face of all that objective evidence, in the face of that judgment from the highest court in the land, the Australian Labor Party wants to abolish the ABCC. It's shameful. Thank you very much, Senator Scar. The time for discussion has expired.